what for somebody that's brand new that maybe they've got a little money in their self-directed IRA or they've yeah. got they've got some money sitting in a checking Ooh. account, <laughs> right? Or um or they've got it in a money market and they're, you know, making three or four percent and they want to get into real estate. I think one of the things that stops those folks a lot is they're scared because mm-hmm. they might go read a book that was written on how to out of, do out-of-state investing. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that you guys have done with your mastermind, you know, and I'm pulling this back to the mastermind. Yeah. I will be uh, in full transparency. I think <laughs> I could be the spokesperson for this thing. And when you want to uh, know more about the mastermind, you're going to text mastermind to 281 281- 401-9008. One of the things that when I watched you guys put this thing together really from the get-go that was just beyond what I've ever seen done was that you're like, listen, we're going to go out and we're going to find properties that we ourselves would buy. Mm -hmm. And we'll bring them to the mastermind and we'll give you guys the opportunity to participate. If you don't, that's cool, but just know that they're going to be ours. Yeah, we're going to buy it. And, uh, you know, conversely, mm-hmm. or, or on, on the flip side of that, a guy like me who, I'm a busy guy. I don't sit around and have seven hours a day mm-hmm. to study. I've got my own businesses and a portfolio to run. Um, you know, it, it was funny. I, we, we, just had, we just had lunch, and I felt a little embarrassed because I was being asked about a bunch of questions about this duplex that we we're closing on in one week. And I don't know a whole lot about mm-hmm. it because the mastermind and the infrastructure that you guys have already put in place has kind of um, jaded me a little bit. Like yeah. I've signed a couple of pieces of paper and I answer some phone calls and, yeah. you know, today I was told, Hey, you need to go to the bank and get a, a get a check. And like, <laughs> I'm just kind of being shepherded, shepherded through sure. the process. And I think that's, I think for those of you that are considering the real estate investing game or the, the adding to your portfolio, number one, the thing that I love about what you guys have done is that you've made it really easy and you've really taken the scary out of people that yeah. um, may either not have done investing before, mm-hmm. they invested or got burned in 07, 08, like I did. Um, you know, I mean, I had an unlimited check at Countrywide until, uh, until I Until you don't, yeah. Until <laughs> I didn't, right? <laughs> that changed in yeah. one day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the other thing that is really sort of amazing is the literal support structure that is in place sure. that I don't know how much you guys talk about it. So I want to just take a few seconds and just talk about the support structure. And when I say support structure, I really mean from the agents that we're working with, the mortgage mm-hmm. people that we're working with, the escrow people, the title people, the insurance people, the construction, the, the construction crews. It has removed all scary in terms of investing in real estate. And quite frankly, the hilarious thing, and I, I, I may be under some sort of rule not to talk numbers, but I will anyways, <laughs> and they, you guys can edit this out if you want. Yeah. But the fact that I am allowed and given the opportunity as a member of this mastermind to participate in buying a duplex at $140,000 sure. is on some level hilarious. Mm-hmm. That's like eight tanks of gas. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 yeah. like, like yeah. I, I think it's really important, especially for those people that may not be in Texas to participate in this mastermind. You're around groups of people, you know, that uh, have varied industries. They're not all real estate gurus like mm-hmm. you guys. They're not all real estate experts and professionals. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to say mm-hmm. that instead of gurus. Um, but you really have brought together a group of individuals from various backgrounds, various investment um, uh, levels, and really brought us all together and kind of gave us a huge opportunity that I don't think a lot of masterminds have. I mean, I'm on faculty with a mastermind and I know I know what we do and I think they deliver. But I think for you guys, what you've done, and you'll know this too, when you text Mister, when you text Mastermind to two eight one four zero one nine zero zero eight, you've really taken the the entire process and put it in a place that somebody that doesn't know anything about real estate, barely can spell real estate, Mm -hmm. can still participate and feel like their hand is being held, and you've put the bumpers up on the bumper card. Yeah. So I think you know, six years ago when we we started this thing. Mm We're like, hey, what would we want? Yeah. 
if we were just starting in real estate investing, what would be the best case scenario? And it's going to be, hey, they're going to, someone's going to bring me properties. Someone's going to help me manage the rehab. Someone's going to help me through the loan process with either referrals or setting up private lenders and those notes. Um, and then finally doing the property management. And I think a lot of folks uh, have come across the turnkey investors, mm -hmm. right? There's a yeah. ton of those guys out there and organizations. They were rampant in 2005, yeah. six and seven. Um, and a lot of people went bad. Now that you never hit the numbers, right? It was always going to be like a six to 7% return. And that was good. If you're doing passive, you're just like, Hey man, take my money and go. And we're like, if we were starting out, there's no way we want to buy that. No, I didn't want that. We don't want 6% a year. I mean, that, nice for some people, but we want the stuff where we're going to make some real bank, mm -hmm. be able to refi our initial investment out and basically get an infinite return over the long term. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want. And so we're like, okay, well, that's what we'll do. And then it's like, well, how many people do we want to work with? It's like, do we want a thousand? It's like, no. You know, do we want 10? Well, we want a little bit more. So we settled on a hundred. And that's it. There's a hundred people allowed in the mastermind at any given time. Now, some will retire or they graduate out, right? They've got their thing, so there's some spots open. But right now, we're working with 74 people. There's 26 spots open, and that will be it. And we will give them the opportunity to make much, much more than they would just in a sort of turnkey. Like you can buy a turnkey house in Detroit, or Phoenix was the big one. You can buy yeah. tons oh, yeah. of Phoenix with a turnkey, and it didn't pan out, right? Now, you still get benefits and stuff like that, but it wasn't the big numbers that we're working with with our investors. Well, just a couple of things to tag in on that, Rob. You know, I've always, as a as a business owner and a guy that buys and sells and advises sure. businesses, you know, you can try to go do it on your own. Yeah. Or you can pay somebody to give a shortcut. And I think right. one of the things that gets in this way is, you know, yeah, there's an investment to be a part of the mastermind. But just in sitting here listening to you guys and being around you, I'm investing in your brains doing whatever it is you do so yep. that I don't have to. Mm -hmm. That's number one. The other thing is I love the fact that you teach us, um, for those that want to, yep. uh, you teach us how to raise capital. Mm -hmm. And I think yep. that's a really important skill. And I was, I, was, I, I just, I, I'm a big asker. I ask for mm -hmm. when, when I work on behalf <laughs> of clients, I'm very good at asking. Um, but we just got our first investor in this duplex deal because of what was taught and trained inside that mastermind. And lastly, I will say that what is really fantastic, at least for me personally, is it's not just a say and spray model. It's not just go out and just buy whatever you can. It's a very clear cut um, sort of 10 house strategy. Now, yep. can I share that real quick? Yeah, like sure, in, like, for like it, the, yeah. the, two the two sentence version? For me, this just makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> buy 10 houses. Wait five years, sell five, pay the other five out, off. Now you've got five free and clear, lather, mm -hmm. rinse, repeat until bald or rich. Like that's the model. Mm -hmm. And for someone like me that is very, I just, somebody give me a plan, somebody tell me a process. And then when, when you guys teach that, the real question isn't, is that going to happen? Because that's what you work with all of us on, but it's how fast do you want that to happen? Right. If you mm -hmm. want to, if you've got a, crap ton of capital, then it can happen really fast. Yeah. If you don't, it can happen slower. Or you can take what we teach you in our private money kind of vertical and ramp that up. And I got to just say, for me, that that is the clincher. So I got a couple of guys who are really running the ship that know what they're actually talking about mm -hmm. because they do it. They have their own portfolios. Second, you're teaching us exactly how to raise capital. I watched it happen literally today at lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Third, there's an actual plan in place zero to 10 yes and it's really how fast do you want you know for me i said I, you know i'm gonna have 10 10 doors in six months mm -hmm. pure and simple but that then becomes now what well now it's about raising the money to be able to do that and so i yep. think that's and i'll also just say this just not not like i'm i'm really sitting here to hammer home the mastermind when you text mastermind to 281-401-9008 <laughs> um that you're that you are not just taking anybody's money, and I know no. there are so many coaches and masterminds and programs that if you've got the money, you're in. Mm -hmm. And what I love, even though I know that it will make some some feathers get ruffled a little bit, that you do have criteria of a FICO do. score, some yep. money, 
and you're actually ready to deploy it because there's yeah. no sense of taking somebody's investment, having them come in mm. if they're not right. going to do anything. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? And the first one's a bit scary. Like, I'll, I'll yeah, be the oh, first, first guy. Like, like, listen, you know. I, first one's a mess. The second one gets out of By the time you get to the third one, it's just boring. It's just moving paperwork <laughs> from one side. It is just moving paperwork from one side of the desk to the other. Well, it's, it's funny you say that, uh, Jason, because I remember, this is several years ago, Rob, you won't, I don't even know if you remember this. You were speaking at an event in Los, in so Southern California. Mm -hmm. It was at uh, RHA's a big event. I think it was a, their, a big event. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, January. Yeah. And, we were both there. And uh, Were you there as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. And I remember one of the most, I've never even shared this with you, but... Um, we were back. We were backstage, and we were having we were having a conversation. And I just remember I don't even remember who it was. It might have been Catherine coming in with a big bunch of papers, and we're sitting there at this little table, and you just had a pen in your hand, and you're just signing away. Oh signing yeah, away, yeah. Signing away. And I'm like, what the hell is going on over here? Yeah. You're like, oh, we're doing some closing. And I'm yeah. like, I just got I, in that moment. I was just literally like going, oh my god. When these people really say they're really doing it, like. Oh, yeah. They're not even uh -huh. thinking about it now. They're just doing yeah. it. There were some times. So at our, our old company, we used to do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. So on Fridays is typically closing Fridays, right? That's usually when you, when you close. So we used to tell people, I had this audience, like 130 people over here in town center. And uh, I said, look, guys, this is not like some shtick. We're closing three today, but I'm the one that has to do it, but I'm speaking right now. So they're just, Tom's just going to send the, the closing gal up to the front of the room and they were like, no, nah, that's not really happening. And then literally shocks in. Tom's like, Hey, I was like, all right, guys, you take a five minute break. And I'm just sitting there at the front table signing stuff. And I'm like, guys, this is, we're doing this every day. And yeah. that's the difference between guys that are actually doing it and other guys that are just podcasting mm -hmm. about it. And yeah. I, and you guys know me, like I am not a, let's not put down other people. That's not my, that's not my bag at all. But I will say that when it comes to people's, long-term stability and retirement mm -hmm. and portfolio building, it is so incredibly important to pick a horse to run with. Right. That, yep. that, that's actually doing it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, you know, again, it, it, it will be scary for sure. Hey, I'm, and, and we're, well, there's no guarantees, mm -hmm. right? There's absolute risk. Every, we tell everyone straight up, right? And the, and the way I say it is like, you know, before you buy your first house, as you're buying your first house, you love Rob. Rob's good. <laughs> That's all, all great. The numbers, everything's fantastic. And I'm like, Jason's a little sketch. And I'm oh, like, yeah. I love Rob. I'm, I'm like, hey man, just this is the easy part. Now the next six months are crazy. We got to stabilize, right? And my joke is, year one, you love me. Year two, you curse me. And year four, you're going to name your children after me because you've created a million dollars worth of wealth mm -hmm. in less than five years. And yeah, so and then they go, oh yeah, this really wasn't that bad. I'm like. Oh, it wasn't. I remember having some conversations. <laughs> Here, let me let's go to the clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Rob, let's 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 take into that for a second. So, someone somebody comes and says, "Hey, I want to I want to I want to create a million dollars of wealth in inside of five years." Sure. You guys walk me through what what what's that look like? Are we just doing this sort of ten house strategy, and we're yes. just kind of being boring around that's it? it? Yeah, that's it. You buy ten so single family houses, maybe a couple duplexes in there. If the goal is to create a million dollars worth of wealth, then we're going to buy ten single family houses, right? And uh, we're going to run about seven years, maybe a little bit more. Um, that we'll have the right type of mortgage in place that really creates a lot more um, principal pay down than your normal thirty year. Uh, and then you're going to, at the end of that, you buy ten houses at one hundred eighty thousand dollars, right? So you got to buy 10 houses and their average is $180,000. You're going to need, let's call it $50,000 per house. So you come to me, you have to have half a million dollars. Or, gonna, ra or raise or it. Or raise private. it, yeah. You have to have access to it. And then we deploy that. We buy your 10 single families or maybe there's a couple duplexes in there. And then we wait. And we wait. And we wait. And we wait. And then year three. We might want to refi some of that money out because we're doing well. But for sure, by year five, we're going to have to take a real hard look at this stuff and say, hey, I think we got your million dollars in equity. Let's just readjust the portfolio. And then we sell what we need to sell. We keep what we need to keep. And you have your cash flow. And uh, at that point, you should have your half a million back as well. So a million dollars worth of wealth equity, right? Mm -hmm. And your half a million dollars cash back. Anything you want to add to that? About every house you hold on to for three to five years should make you a hundred grand. 
Yeah. The math's really simple. It's real simple. Just hold on to them. 100,000 bucks. That's it. Is that going to happen in year one? No. Oh, I get some real snippy emails. 90 days. Yeah. Jason, my house didn't appreciate 20% last year. I said, it will over five years. Yeah. 20% a year, all day long, yeah. over five years. First year, maybe not so much. Second year, 30%. Next year, zero. Give it five years, it'll appreciate about 20% a year. Now, the properties that we're buying at that $180,000 yeah. in a market right now where the average home is like 360. Yeah. So we're buying at that lower point of the marketplace. Um, we're buying the deals, right? In Corpus, we're buying them still at ninety to one hundred thousand dollars a single family, mm-hmm. and a market where the single families are worth two forty. So we got to put love into them, fix it up. But then they go from this little box over here, like, geez, who would want to live there, to the big box where all the other houses are appreciating like mad. Mm-hmm. We take them out of this one, we do our little magic, we put it into this one, right? Then all of a sudden, you're going to be getting that appreciation. Then your $100,000 house that you bought, $50,000 worth of rehab, spikes super fast because yeah. it looks like every other house selling for two forty. dollars mm-hmm. so Right off the bat, boom, that's captured equity. And then we're going to you know, wait three to five years to get your hundred grand. Gotcha. So another thing that I, that, that I hear about Texas, and I'll just throw this, throw this in here, is hurricanes. Mm-hmm. Windstorms, that that yeah, that, yeah. that type. Obviously, you guys moved in here and and dealt with a hurricane. How how does that affect or does that affect anything that you're doing in terms of? I I I will say this to you: How could you possibly live in California with all those wildfires, mudslides, and earthquakes? Uh, hey, I I I I, I get it. <laughs> I, I trust me. In the moment when those earthquakes happen, uh, I, I, yeah, I question. Yeah. We'll say with yeah. same thing when hurricanes. So here, here's what's interesting: It's like okay, hurricane comes in, tears a bunch of stuff up. You know what happens as soon as the as soon as the trash is on the on the corner and all, yeah, they start rebuilding. I, I have seen no neighborhood where hurricane comes in, no one want, nobody moves back in. It's just like this. Desolate, dead neighborhood. Right. That was that was something different in New Orleans that happened, right? And, and some of that stuff. But even you know, Florida, they're rebuilding. You know, yeah, like that. all that stuff. Well, well New Orleans is a good example where there are entire sections of that city. They're all on government assistance. There's right. no employment there. Yeah, that's the problem there. Mm-hmm. There's just nothing. It's it's just a dead city, with the exception of the French Quarter and a handful of yeah, them. yeah. And yeah. they do a lot of offshore oil and gas stuff, but. Problem is nobody really wants to live there. No, and the so, offshore oil and gas guys are in Baton Rouge, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's the what happens in Houston is a hurricane comes in, blows a business just shut down for two stuff. weeks, and then we're like, uh, hey guys, get, get so, back to work. Yeah, come on, it's time to go. Yeah, time to go. <laughs> so let's let let me ask another. Uh, I'll ask this, and I'll, I'll try to keep it. I'm going to try to keep it in the constraints of not going political. But oh. let's go political. <laughs> this is our show. What are you talking? <laughs> about? We do whatever we want. Come on, man. What are you talking um, about? You, you know, obviously, you know. Rob and Jason, both you have mentioned in, in the past the oil and gas industries here in sure. Texas, and that's that's where you see that. There's obviously a little bit of pushback to adding more oil and gas in the United States. Mm-hmm. Um, do you see that having a, a major effect over a short run, medium run, long run, never? What what how forget the fuel, just looking around this room, Casey. 40% of the items are made from oil and made from oil here. This plastic, petroleum, this is petroleum. The camera stands petroleum. The camera case is petroleum based. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be a need for petroleum products until we figure out some way to take, you know, CO2 eating plants and make, you know, cell phone covers out. We haven't quite yeah. got there yet. So if we look at that, that's fine. I will just tell you this. And just so we're real clear. I'm a Democrat. He's a Republican. It don't matter. We're both here to make money, right? Mm-hmm. To create yep. wealth. So that's that's our main uh, course here. But um, you're maybe just a little bit ahead of our renewable energy production here in Texas. Right? I mean, are, are, oh, well, are, there, are, are there big swaths of land that are being put into oh, renewables? Yeah, of course. Oh, you got to go down to Corpus, man. We're it's the number wild. one wind state in the country. In fact, we sell our wind back to California. So, <laughs> so, so then, so then, here's the question: then, then, why on the political spectrum on both both sides? Yeah, um, are they not selling that story? Oh, because it's just a narrative. It's just a you know, 
because it seems you want to believe what you want to believe because True. that's you get stuff your that own, gets sold to yeah. you. Just like you know, people are like, "Oh my God, he's from California." You know, here it's yeah. like, "Yeah, you want to believe what you want to believe," and that's what gets sold to you. The reality is, is that Texas is one of the greenest states in the country, and gave birth to the greenest president we have ever had. Right, George W. For certain, was the most active president with converting the building stock in our country to become renewable and uh, become um, energy efficient. So lots of renewables here and we will become the number. We're almost the number one state uh, in the entire planet producing uh, electric vehicles. I was just going to say, because you've got some big, big, like Tesla's coming down here with a big. They're already here. They're already here. They're 20,000 employees. In and twenty thousand employees means ten thousand houses. That's right. That's right. And According gonna, to the J math, and yeah. they're going to sixty thousand in the next five years. They're going to produce the Cybertruck, the Model Two, and the Model Y's maybe here. And that and the problem was that area of town they were going into Austin wasn't great, and mm. and East Austin now is obviously just hopping right? right. But really, the the story of of Texas politics in particular is uh, we wrote on what's called a biennium. So ev- they only meet every other year. So things don't change real fast around here. But what I keep telling everybody is I'm like, California, whatever's happening in California shows up here in five to 10 years. Oh, I believe. Oh, there's no way. There's well, no yeah, way. You know why? <laughs> Going back to our first thing, there's a 747 that's of us right. dumping yeah. off here every day. Well, I'll give we you a good can. example. So the whole ADU thing in California started about five years ago. Yeah. I just saw proposed legislation at the see? Harris County level yeah. about ADUs. How do we get more units on a piece of property? Yeah. And so there's going to be a lot of changes coming down the pike on that. It's like, where do you put people? Well, let's look at what other states have done. Well, if you don't like this, here's the problem. Somebody's got to go somewhere. And uh, yeah, and, and this is this is the problem we have in SoCal. In SoCal, we don't have enough places to go, so they camp out in front of Sizzler. Sorry. Right, right. Yeah. Sizzler. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's kind of the thing. But you know, I've been around here, and I've only been in I've only been in Texas for the last 24 hours, but I haven't seen anywhere close to the homeless problem. The, the homeless problem that we oh, have yeah. in Southern California. No, we have our one-tenth city. Austin That's about had it. some problems. And they're starting to clean that up. I'll just say this. And again, I'm 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 a blue guy, right? So um I will get a little political. This is a state that is very friendly, right? And but it's also very conservative. And more importantly, no one wants to see you running around with your on your sleeve. Right? As yeah. long as you don't wear it out here and make a big fuss out of it, we're totally cool with anyone. Yeah, right? I don't care. It nobody cares. It's about their families. It's about you know, hey, they're, they're they're sort of understanding. And if you understand the history of Texas, you know, a lot of the Germans came here, self reliance. They drank a lot of beer, so there's a beer culture here. They hunted here, so there's a gun culture here. It all goes back. It all makes a lot of sense. Um, but that being said, I mean, we're in the one of the biggest blue cities in the country. Yeah, Houston. This is a massive blue city here, right? And um, no one, no one here is is what they're portrayed at on TV in California or in the Northeast. It's it's so interesting. I, I would say that if I take the and and just as a guy that does a lot of travel, every time I've been in Florida, Texas, mm-hmm. and California, mm-hmm. it's like those three states. We seem to have the most charge yeah. in whatever, and it's just so funny because. It's, I, I joke, people, you know, complain about Californians mm-hmm. until they go to sell their house. Oh, and yeah, that's right. Like, hey, oh, guys, well, you guys, hey, you're paying cash? You're paying, yeah. closing in three you weeks? sold some Bitcoin? That's like, come on yeah. down. Or, or you get this weird new vegan infused something <laughs> yeah. restaurant. You're like, this place is great. Yeah, they, once you go try it, you're like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is fantastic. So, but it really is. It's like, we. I think sometimes we just get in our own feedback loop. Oh, for sure, and 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 it's very difficult, very difficult to to break out of that. I think that's one of the reasons why my experience in investing down here in Texas is such a positive one, um, mm-hmm. because it's also breaking a feedback loop. Yeah. That, that now, don't we, get me wrong. This ain't Santa Monica. Oh no, I, right? No, and I didn't. And I, well, don't well, prete- I don't I'll pretend. I don't pretend. You know, <laughs> I'm a Jersey guy from California, so I'll get a couple side eyes here and there. But for the most part, it's like, hey, what are you here to do? I'm here to buy real estate, create jobs, and create wealth. Fantastic. We, we're so happy you're here. Well, I will right? tell you this. When I go to Southern California and I cross, it's almost like 
It's almost like the demilitarized zone. Yeah. When you cross L.A. County to Orange County, I'm like, oh, thank God. Yeah. I'm back at civilization. They do refer to it as the Orange Curtain. So oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's totally yeah. the Orange It's curtain. right there. Yeah. And it's, it's right there. I crumb across. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah. You get that uh, orange crush right there. Like, oh, yeah, so you're like, good, oh, yeah. this is so much better. Yeah. Okay, just get me out of L.A. County as fast <laughs> as possible. That's why I was like, I can't wait to get that Orange County club started like as fast yeah. as possible. I'm like, bring me over here. <laughs> um, so let me ask you another question, just because I know I, 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 this, this is a great conversation. Sure. Um, so obviously there are a ton of different asset classes out, outside of mm -hmm. real estate. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are talking about, you mm -hmm. know, for me, there's, there's several different opportunities. Buying businesses, um, you know, can trade businesses on a portfolio. Uh, there's the crypto markets that are going mm -hmm. in and out. Um, you know, the stock market, uh, you know, as a guy who started playing the stock market when I was 15, that's seems like that's a little on its way out until it gets tokenized through mm -hmm. block, blockchain technology. Do you see those other asset classes? Let's see, how do I want to phrase this question? I'll use myself as an example, and I'll ask you if, if you're seeing more of this or if I'm a complete outlier. You know, my investment philosophy mm -hmm. really comes down to a simple equation. I make money so I can buy income. Yeah. And, and when I look at buying a business, when I look at buying crypto, when I look at investing in the stock market, I'm looking at those tools to make money so that I can then turn around and buy income. And when I evaluate things, I look at real estate, especially down here where it's hitting the 1% rule. And if you guys aren't familiar with the 1% mm -hmm. rule, it's like, the holy grail of real estate. I would go go Google it or YouTube it. I'm sure Robin Jason Old have time it. Rule um, of thumb. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that that's a philosophy that you can tap into in terms of helping folks that are coming out of those buying and selling businesses, exiting those businesses, exiting the boring businesses mm -hmm. as people retire out, those money-making deals, and then putting it into real estate as a way to lock it down and secure it a little bit? One of the best yeah, asset classes out there. Right? Absolutely. And this is what it's called. You'll... A lot of these buildings out on I-10 over here, and this is called the energy corridor right here, up from here all the way out to about 99. And a lot of those older um, high-rise office buildings you're going to see are what are called coupon clippers. And they're called that because a family's gone and made a lot of money somewhere else and bought one. They own it free and clear. So they may have made their money in uh, cattle. Oil and gas cattle. or whatever, oh, yeah. construction, oil, yeah. whatever, right? Uh, in fact, one of the guys I deal with... Um, I haven't dealt with him in a while, but he's a big commercial real estate guy here in town. He was an engineer in oil and gas for years and then just started buying real estate and he pays it off. And he's in his seventies now. And, uh, that they're called coupon clippers because it's like, Oh, the building's only 50% occupied. Well, who cares? My NOI is still a million dollars a year. I'm still making a million dollars a year on this thing. It's got virtually no risk because I own it free and clear. All my maintenance is done obviously by my team that does like they, it's a, what they call the coupon clipper. And so You'll run into these guys and somebody will tell me like, Jason, office space is going to collapse. and These guys are going to lose all their buildings. I'm like, I know half a dozen of these guys and they own all of this. They've owned it for 20 years. They're not going to lose it because they don't owe anything on it. It's just their savings account, right? They just, hey, I made, sold this company, made 50 million bucks, went over here and bought a $3 million building. So it, it, is, uh, it is a store of wealth. It's probably more effective as a store of wealth than generating wealth. If you really get into those two things as comparisons, it is an absolute monster and in a store of wealth. Benefits a lot of people yeah, the tax that. benefits, everything. It's fantastic. And, 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 you know, obviously with all those different asset classes, the one thing that affects all of them are interest rates. Yeah. To a certain extent. Right, yeah. I mean, to, to, to some extent. I mean, like, as a, as a crypto kid, um, I'd like to say I'm a kid. I'm just going to keep calling myself that yeah. in case somebody okay. else actually buys it. Um, <laughs> Interest rates seem to, whether the reality or not, mm -hmm. the perception is that interest rates pretty much drive everything. So talk to me a tiny bit about, obviously it's difficult to predict and all of that jazz, but we're in record high interest rates right mm -hmm. now over a short run, right? I mean, I remember back in the 80s and, and early 90s, you know, by that we'd be jumping up and down with the, mm -hmm. the seven and a half. Where, what do you what do you predict over say the next? Let's just call it the next. You know we're going into an election cycle, mm -hmm. regardless of which nutbag wins. Um, what do you see over the next two years, three years? Because I know Rob, you and I have spent a lot of time together talking about 
Um, you know, hey, three years. I know I, I listen to the show religiously. I know mm-hmm. your guys' famous saying, survive till 25. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I do my homework. There you go. I, I, yeah. do, my, mm-hmm. I do my homework. Um, why is that survive till 25 a thing? And how do interest rates or what's the, what is your kind of take on where they are now and what brings them down or pushes them higher? Well, so we have never seen interest rates increase prices of real estate. It has never happened. Even in the 80s, rates went through the roof. Look at the price of real estate. It just trucked right along with it. Doesn't it doesn't decrease. It doesn't drop. The price. It doesn't drop. And a lot of times it just follows the price right, yeah. right Wait, along with it. Wait, say that again. So a raise in interest rate, in, a raise in rates does not decrease prices. Mm-hmm. That's correct. So what it does is it just slows down the ability for somebody to get in. Yeah, for somebody to get into a home. So what ends up happening is homeowners just don't put their house on the market. If you go back and look at the 70s and 80s, the price of real estate went up commensurate with the increase in rates. It was absolutely wild. Why was that happening? We were trying to curb inflation. What's a big driver of inflation? Housing. So I got all these supposed really smart guys in a room one day. And they said, Jason, you understand, price of real estate is going to fall. I said, how does that work? Well, inflation. like. Real estate's like 30% inflation. Like that's 30% of that metric. So if inflation is rising, that means the value of real estate is rising. Well, I don't want to invest in real estate because interest rates are up. I'm like, well, that's because we're combating inflation. So the value of real estate is increasing commensurate with the rate. That was the big problem in the 70s and 80s. So then I'd ask these guys who'd lived through this, I'd say, well, did the price of real estate in 84 go back to 75? Absolutely not, right? Whatever the price was in 84, it was way higher than 75 and the prices sure. never went down. So Really, in real estate, it's a what's really causing the problems now is on the commercial real estate side, where you now have lenders that are backing away saying, Whoa, maybe we shouldn't lend right now because rates are, but it's not just that rates are going up, it's that uh, folks aren't able to refinance in these commercial mortgage backed securities. And so, if you can't refi, the value goes down because they're gonna have to sell at a fire sale because it's going to foreclosure. But even the foreclosures we've seen haven't been smoking hot deals, like so it's been. That that part of it has been a bit uh, interesting, but I don't see rates. I don't know. If we didn't have the banking crisis, we'd be down another 150 bips. We'd be in the sixes right now, at least. So when you say banking crisis, are you including like an FTX in that? Yeah, that's the whole yeah. FTX thing. Although FTX didn't have, it was really the uh, banks of California, one in New York that just kind of, it put a shock through the system. Everybody freaked out. We are, everything I've read said, we have got about 150 bips just on that alone. Uh, in fact, the bond auction today added seven bips just to the bottom line. That's why we're at 7.55% interest right now. Right. So a lot of it is just economic uncertainty. And there's going to be a lot of that leading up to November. Right. Oh, yeah. So then once the election's over, we'll know which way we're going, right? So then the market's going to say, okay, well, we've got three years of this now. So so we're good. We're good. We're going to fix and, and And we'll all know, right? Hey, if the real estate developer gets reelected again, yeah. Interest rates are going to come down pretty quickly, right? Yeah. If not, then we know that, hey, six and a half, seven and a half percent is going to be the norm for the next three to four years. I think it's- more of that uncertainty is we've got one guy facing criminal charges and another one that's hanging on by, you know, yeah, by skateboard in the work. Yeah. No. <laughs> so it's like, well, it's really interesting. I just, you know, it's, it's sort of funny. I'll, I, I'll give kind of two examples and these are just anecdotal, but they just are in my, my world. My attorney. Uh, she's an attorney. She's also a venture capitalist. She has a, she has a fund. She invests in pre-startup um, funds, uh, companies. She has a marketing firm. And she went in and put a half a million dollars in a commercial building. She rented it, mm-hmm. put a half a million of her own money in, built the thing out. Absolutely the most stunning office building in LA. COVID hit. Everybody had to leave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Landlord basically was like, you're going to keep paying rent. She was like, you got to give me a break. He didn't do it. She finally was like, you know, F you, I'm out. Yeah. Walked away because her landlord wanted the building back because he thought he could rent it to somebody else yeah. with all her TI in it. And uh, she then went and hired her entire staff. Now is like in Arkansas, Missouri, yeah. Montana. So her staff is completely spread out. And she's like, Case, hey, I have no office space. I mm-hmm. do this entire thing out of my house. You just took an entire thing off the market. And that building is still vacant today. Mm-hmm. LA, you know, you go downtown, you got these high skyscrapers where pre pre COVID, you know, an attorney law office had a floor. Mm-hmm. You know, those floors are 100K a pop. Yep. They are vacant all over the place because the guys were like, no, you have to come to work. You have to come to work. COVID happens, forced done. 
Now nobody go back. You go downtown LA, <clears throat> like we just, I just went to a play downtown LA. Pre COVID, you'd had to leave 90 minutes before the thing mm, yeah. to just to try to like <laughs> finagle <laughs> parking and get yeah, down that four, you, that yeah, one ten. Always I mean, eat at the, at the theater. Oh, right? that, yeah. oh, that was just a given. Yeah, that was yeah, like, you got to get there two hours. 4 30, yeah. yeah. For we eight flew. Show. And at an eight o'clock show, I was able to leave my house at like 7.15, still grab a glass of wine and still get into the show. There's no one mm -hmm. down there. And you look at those buildings and people are like, you know, kind of going after the developers. I'm like, you guys don't understand. The thing that scares me about the, those skyscrapers is those are owned by pension plans. Yeah, those, those are aren't owned, owned by, by guys Billy like Billy Bob and, and his dad. No, these are big These are not coupon clippers. No, this is uh, CalFERS. This is Teachers Retirement Fund. Uh, what's the other yeah, big fund? Big Dallas one. is in huge trouble. They're Dallas fund and they're invested in all that stuff. Yeah. So that's going to be a huge problem for them. Most of us are buying these little hundred thousand square foot things over here and that sort of thing. So there, there's going to be a real problem there. I don't, and I don't know what it looks like. So I would just say, yeah, so what? And that's the thing. Cause like, Hey, I'm buying a hundred eighty thousand dollar house. It has absolutely nothing to do with that skyscraper. Right. <laughs> and so Rob, talk, talk about, this is really important. Right? Rob, so talk just, about this. Yeah. So, we just get distracted, right? It's just noise. I'm like, that. Oh, you could be a thousand percent correct. Those skyscrapers could never get filled again. Of course they will. Real estate always finds its highest and best use. Always. So a giant office. The homeless towers, encampments would make fantastic opportunities. Well, they're going to have better their apartments. They'd yeah, have whatever, better right? than most yeah. of us. If right? people are working at home, then they need to have better homes to live in. Yeah. Right? We forgot all about that side of it. Well, I, right. I argued, needed, all of a sudden, you didn't need a one bedroom. You needed a three bedroom because everyone needed an office in their house. Right? Yeah, hundred well, percent. Right? What do you think would happen during COVID? Everyone then remembered that the most important real estate asset is a single family house. Right. Before then, it was the triple net lease with, let's say, Apple. And what did Apple do during COVID? <laughs> Stop they said rent. they stopped paying their rent. Twitter they said they could paying rent. Yeah, I mean. and they and Nike did it too. And they said, "Sue me." By the way, courts are closed and I'm like suing God. So good luck <laughs> right. getting your rent out of me, right. you know, Marcus and Millichamp or whoever it is right. that was. So it's like, it's, yeah, that whole, like the big corporates and we need to invest in this. I knew a lot of guys that lost triple, lost a ton of money on triple net leases sure. because they couldn't collect rent. Well, guess what? I'm still collecting rent at some point on that single family house. Cause yeah. you got to have a roof over your head somewhere. Awesome. Right. So we don't let that distract us. Right. And yeah, we don't, we don't know. We talked to today. It's like, Hey, you're buying a strip ball. I'm like, no, I don't know anything about it. But you're going to have to jump in and figure all that stuff out. And what I do know is single family houses. I've been working at that market for 13 years. So nothing scares me in a single family house. I mean, I got to walk a mastermind member through a house that is not in good shape. We found a lot of termites active. So we got to deal with it, but I'm not scared. I'm just like, Hey, you're about to get a completely redone house at like 70 bucks a square foot. This is amazing. You're essentially getting new construction mm -hmm. for $70 a square foot. You should be ecstatic. This house, this little complex here is going to last 25 years without any sort of major problems. Um, but, you know, we got to handhold them and they got to go. To the, it's scary, but it's, it's, I'm not afraid of anything in single family at this point. Not the interest rates, not any of this stuff. We're, we just have to adjust and move with the marketplace. So, so. Brand new person. They've yep. got a decent credit score. Yep. They've got a little bit of cash. Sure. Uh, a little bit of cash or some friends that have cash. Mm -hmm. Even with rates at, would you say, 7, 7 5, 5 so or whatever? They're essentially for investors are at 9%. Yeah, okay, 9%. 9 yeah. Hard money is going to be a little bit higher. Yeah. You're still saying now's the time to buy 100%. Yeah, because here's what's happened. Here in happened. Texas, yes. Here's what's happened in the last year. And uh, I'll get the HAR report when we get back from the cruise. But the houses we buy appreciated 10% this year. So here is the discussion we're having when rates go down and they will, what's going to happen to the price of real estate. You're going to have a lot more buyers in that marketplace for restricted supply. So when Rob and I talk about a five to seven year plan with 10 houses, that might actually be three years. Yeah. Because if we see another COVID spike of real estate going up 50% and you got 10 houses at $200,000 each, you just made a million dollars. Like yeah. it, it's, it's it's gonna happen fast. That's what happened during COVID. If you had twelve houses, about one hundred eighty thousand bucks each, you made a million dollars in eighteen months. So it's coming. We know. I, I talked to investors and in fact, I talked to a loan guy today and real estate agents, and this is what I hear: Jason, I've been doing this 
5, 10, 15, 20 years. I have never in my career had this many folks that want to buy that are sitting on the sidelines waiting for rates to go down. Mind you, prices are still going up. So here's what's going to happen. Those folks eventually are going to go, all right, rates are now down to the fives. Rates are in the sixes. Rates are in the six, whatever the number is. And they're just going to start hitting the market. And when that happens, you're going to just see this massive ramp in prices. Will there be enough supply for the money are, supply for that? For those, There'll be enough money supply, but there's already not enough. Um, there's already not enough supply of houses. So this is going to, this supply issue we have is going to get worse. That's what's going to cause prices to go up. And you get your 10, 20, 30 houses. Like I said, you may be done in three years. Sell half, pay the other half off. And like, I'm retired. I'm making 20 G's a month, free and clear. Like, I don't, I'm good. And then you go off and do some other stuff. So that is a very, very likely scenario. Yeah. Uh, folks need to recognize, first, if, if you have a good FICO, you have a job. What's, got, what's a, what's, what would you consider good? 740 is a good FICO, right? That's that threshold. And you, can, you can go get it at myfico.com. Pull it. Stuff, One yeah. thing I learned from you is there's make sure to to look for the mortgage FICO rate. Yes. Uh, not just your regular FICO rate. Mm-hmm. Your regular FICO rate is a marketing rate to make you go feel good about using your credit card. <laughs> That's exactly what it's exactly what it is. I love yeah. it. it just makes you feel good about it. But here's the deal. You're you're buying a house. Um now you're looking at a house, let's say, in Corpus. It's gonna be like 180. We know it's gonna be worth like 200 it's going to go up 10 percent. so you're going to make 20 thousand dollars in appreciation bucks a month Mm -hmm. yeah and then you also captured equity was twenty thousand dollars so if you don't if you have the resources and you're not buying that your your opportunity cost you're losing thirty five hundred dollars a month now if you come makes me me a little sick to my stomach if you come to me that's (laughs) what i'm saying is like if you come to me and tell me hey i can buy five I'm like, okay, so every month we're not moving forward. We're losing $17,000. We understand that, right? And they go, what? I'm like, yeah, well, there's so all go going the on in again. my head right now. That's yeah. it. <laughs> all right. So what are we waiting on? It's like, oh, I got to get this thing going. And I'm like, okay. Is it worth 17 grand a month? Right. Well, here's the other thing. Just to, just right. to bring this back, and I, I said this to Rob right before we, we started this. Again, I'm a guy that does asks all day mm-hmm. long when I'm in a business transaction or I'm taking down a business, I'm adding it to the portfolio or I'm taking out a software company or whatever. I'm real good at mm-hmm. that ask. But it wasn't until I started listening to you guys about asking to put the private investor money together. Sure. And, you know, I'm a pretty confident dude, mm-hmm. quite frankly. And it's a, it's, it's a little weird and a little uncomfortable because I'm not used, I'm not used to it. And I said to mm-hmm. Rob yesterday... I said, hey, you know what? I am just a guy that when I see something and it actually like it works and I see it, it's like a game on, Mm -hmm. right? Like I know that when we close on this duplex, it's game on, right? So literally (laughs) today at lunch, I watched what you guys are talking about happen in real life. Mm -hmm. Literally watched it (laughs) and and two hours ago. I wasn't even at the table and I heard it. I'm like, ooh, raise the money for something. (laughs) I, I, I literally watched a guy at lunch um, because here you guys have it at is it Aunt Pookie's Aunt Pookie's 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 every Wednesday every Wednesday Wednesday. it's their version of Sizzler it's way better (laughs) Um, guy sat down I'll I'll paraphrase it Uh, I've got money I don't know what to do with it and I've never seen Rob work so I I see Rob move but this one this man moves fast oh yeah (laughs) if he had had a pen we would have had something signed yeah but it really shows that what you're doing actually is working because you're actually doing it. And I just watched it with my own two eyes. Yeah. That was the easiest money raise. I didn't ask. Ever. There was I, didn't, yeah. I didn't ask. Yeah, it was like, hey, we might got, got some stuff for you. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll talk. Email yeah. it to me. Yeah. yeah. So I think the I think a couple, a couple of takeaways. I don't know how we're doing on time. I'm guessing we're a little over. We're going but, along, but that's all right. A um, couple of takeaways. A lot of jobs coming in. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ratio of every two jobs, we need a new house. Mm-hmm. There's a 747 of people coming from California dumped off every, every day. day. They hold about 600, 600 mm-hmm. people. Not that I have flown them once <laughs> or twice. Um, being able to put together a plan of come in, grab 10 uh, doors or houses, yep. um, sit on them a few years, mm-hmm. survive till 25, be able to sell off half of them, right. put some in, put some in place. In 25, you should be able to do refine and take a lot of your initial capital out. Yeah, and being able again. to do that over and over yes. and over again um, down here in Texas, we've got one percent rule. We've got around a six to seven yeah. percent yearly yep. appreciation. in uh, yep. appreciation. 
Um, we try and capture 10% on the buy. So capture mm-hmm. Capture 10% yep. on the buy. You've got a lot of factories coming in here. You've got renewable energy coming in here. We Absolutely. still are going to need... I'm sorry. Sorry. We, right. We're going to need... I know this is a Jason Bible show, so it's going to be <laughs> edited and, you know... Um, and uh, and ultimately, if people want to get a hold of you guys and talk about the mastermind, they can text mastermind to uh, 281-401-9008. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Um, gang, I'm just telling you, I, this has been absolutely super fun for me. I remember the days <laughs> when we did the radio show and I was oh, thinking yeah, for a whole yeah. week and it was like, I felt a little weird because I felt like this time I'm bombarding you guys with questions. But oh, the last yeah. time you were bombarding me with questions. But I just want to say thank you. Um, even on behalf of investors that aren't part of the mastermind mm-hmm. or aren't part of, of your space. I know that people listen and watch the show and what you're doing is really kind of bringing the real back to real estate. Mm-hmm. And I think that's just really important. So on behalf of all of us in, uh, investors that have either done a deal, never done a deal, too scared to do a deal, going to do a deal, maybe want to do a deal, sure. or maybe just read the Mr. Texas real estate book about doing a deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, you're thanks welcome. for being on the show. All right, guys. Absolutely. Let's go on a cruise. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you.